Today we'll be testing shotgun slugs that resemble miniature tank rounds more than they do shotgun slugs. Regular viewers may recognize the heavy hitter slugs from previous tests, but based on those tests, this slug has been redesigned to make it more accurate and stable in flight. But the most exciting part about these, these actually go boom when they hit the target. Now the new slug design looks very similar to the old one. The new one is on the right, and you can see that he has shifted the center of gravity a little more forward. The fins are a little bit flatter, and the overall height of the slug is a little bit shorter. And it's the little tweaks like this that can make the difference between success and failure in the aerodynamics of a slug. Now all these tweaks were done without sacrificing really any weight. These things still weigh almost 42 grams, or close to one and a half ounces, or 645 grains. Ouch! Now these are not a solid slug, they have a pretty sizable cavity in there for a little 12 gauge slug. So what they want to do is fill that void with a trinary or binary compound and use one of those 22 caliber uh, nail gun blanks or powder actuary tool blanks as the contact fuse. It's crazy, it's crazy. Welcome back. Jeff and Danny here. Uh, you guys remember the heavy hitters? If you've watched the previous videos of them. Well, they sent us some new stuff and uh, he says he's got a noisemaker of some sort in it. We're not sure because we don't know what it is so we can't say but uh, we got a box full of them here we're gonna see what kind of surprises he's got in store for us <laughs> so we're gonna load him up here in the Benelli what do you got the rifle choke on there yes all right since it's always better to be safe than sorry we wrap the breech of the shotgun with a Kevlar body armor panel just in case the breech happens to let go the first target is a gas bottle. It's made out of steel and it's filled with water. Ready when you are. I'm ready. There we go. Now the accuracy was pretty good considering the goofy setup we had to shoot these from. But look at that energy. It ripped the top off. It, it blew the valve off. And uh, the base was just shattered as the cylinder expanded in all directions. So far the tests are going really well. well. A little bit different than the last time we shot one of these tanks. This one. Blew the valve Blew and the, the valve and ripped the handle off. Jeez. Uh, blind aiming it wasn't too bad. Broke that little plastic base thing. But this time no exit wound. Got a few dents. Okay. So it did come through and hit it hard, but not enough to... And oh. inside, it, the slug is just turned into... Base. This is what we found inside. A little piece of the brass. Couldn't tell if the thing had a report or not. <laughs> yeah, if it did, it was muffled in the water. Yeah. So we'll, we'll shoot a hard target with him and yeah. see what we get out of it. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that very often, huh? No. We brought up the frame rate of the Kronos high speed camera to 8,800 frames a second. And look at that slug stability. The rifle choke gave it just enough spin and look at that accuracy, almost dead on, on that little sticker. Normally a slug will just drive itself into the wood and not split it like that. So this gives you an idea how much energy these things have on impact. It definitely blew up. <laughs> <laughs> it blowed up good. I uh, can see a piece of lead down in there, so we're going to open it up in front of all of you here. Was, so. that, was that about where the sticker was? I think it was. Think oh, it look was. at that. It's all charred. Charred. There's a piece of our... Oh. Wow. Is it hot? Are you burning yourself? Nah. Oh. <laughs> I'm tougher than somebody. 
<laughs> well, about all we can find here. There was a couple of fragments on the ground and on the table, and none, in, none in us. So that, that's good. That, yeah, none in us, but not. Uh, <laughs> opened up a pretty good cavity there. Yeah, it's it's not very often we see a slug split a big old piece of wood like that. Not bad. So they, they seem to be working, whatever, whatever they're Whatever's doing. Whatever's in there. Is, yeah. I don't want to get hit by it. No. Okay, let's shoot that big ugly block of gel with it. All right. I haven't seen any flashes or anything yet, so that'll be interesting. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All righty, here we go. Well, no test is complete without a failure. This one, the contact fuse was knocked out of the nose from the inertia. We spilled a little bit of that compound and nothing really happened. Except when a one and a half ounce slug strikes a fleshy material like our ballistic booger, <laughs> things happen. Okay, now, Danny recast the lead plate. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> nice and fresh. Nice and fresh, 25 pounds. 25 pounds of lead. Let's see what this will do to the, do to that sucker. Okay, I'm ready when you ever right. you are. Here we go, rock and roll. Woo! That one popped. Yes, yeah, sir. Wow. What you're about to see is the most impressive lead plate shot we've ever recorded so far. This slug left a cavity measuring two inches across or around five centimeters. Huge cavity from a small 12 gauge slug. Hey, you ruined the, the pristine new plate. I think I put a dent in her. <laughs> got bits of lead. That's a... Ooh, that's deeper than the Russian ones. Yeah, by a little more than just the tip. <laughs> oh, look at the backside, though. Yep. Man, that, that thing's bulge. thick. Didn't quite crack it, but it sure bulged it. Yeah. yeah. All blackened and everything. Okay, that's good. Okay, well, we moved the target to 50 yards, so maybe we can actually hear the the report over the shotgun shot noise, you know. Uh, we're shooting at a big cement uh, concrete type uh, paving stone, paver. See if Danny can hit these, get hit that at 50 yards and what effect it'll have on it. Okay, I'm, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Here we go. Oh, yep. I, heard, I heard the pop. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Now 50 yards is probably getting close to the maximum effective range of these slugs. The shot was just a couple inches to the left, but still a very impressive shot by Danny. And look at that devastation. Now you're probably saying that thing's got to be illegal. It's got to be a destructive device. But according to the ATF, a destructive device has to have a quarter ounce or more of compound in it. And these only have one or two grams in it. Looks like it hit here. But I'm not going to put the puzzle back together. <laughs> uh, suffice it to say that it hit and uh, it hit hard. Definitely got a little report and a bit of a flash out of it. Now, in order to give you an idea how far Jerry Linquist, the designer of these slugs, has come in improving the aerodynamics of these, we'll shoot an old type at 50 yards and show you how those perform. 
All right, 50 <laughs> yards. 50 yards at the GOAT AR500 target. Should be interesting. I bet it'll knock it over. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, I think we're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Boy, you can hear that thing fly. Now, as you can see, the old design definitely had some aerodynamic problems. This slug is uh, just flip-flopping through the air. Doesn't know which direction to point itself. Surprisingly, Danny still hit the target at that range. And of course, the contact fuse was in the wrong orientation and nothing really happened. Okay, take another 50 yard shot at the AR-500 plate. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Now, as you can see, the new design tweaks definitely have helped the accuracy and stability of these slugs. Now, these rank up there as some of the coolest and most fun shotgun slugs we've ever shot. Hopefully, these will be available soon. They'll get approval to sell these crazy things, and you could buy them too. Where do you find them? Well. coolest exotic shotgun ammo out there. Hope you enjoyed watching this. We had a lot of fun making it and we want to thank our generous Patreon supporters for making this video possible to you guys.